Hey there, Bootzone here. I'm just putting the finishing touches on these panels before I connect them to my solar system. I've mounted them on a wall this time. So this solar carport I installed about six months ago, maybe seven, maybe, maybe eight months ago now. And they've done over winter. And originally the plan was that they would be a roof in themselves, but in the end I had to take them off and put tin down because they leaked everywhere. Such is the nature of solar panels, they're not watertight, bizarrely, even though they're glass, they're not sealed into their own frames, even though they appear to be sealed into their own frames. Nevertheless, uh, we did that, got it working. So two thirds of the system was over here, roughly, and five more panels up on the wall. And the inverter I have can take two different strings. So these get the sun up from about 11 in the morning until the evening time. You can see they're pretty much in the shade now, but the sun's just glancing off them panels over here if this tree wasn't here would still be getting the sun but they get the sun all afternoon from maybe two o'clock onwards and they should give a little boost in the evening when we start using electricity more indoors so I want to talk about these panels and how I mounted them that's the point of this video so if I go over here where I have the last one to put on Put a 3x2 screwed to the wall with two big screws, 5 inch screws, so there's about 2 inches of screw in the wall. And I've put little pieces of aluminium angle here, and then little bits of rubber go on them, just like this. I think I have two over here because this one's a little bit crooked, and a third here. So they can't fall out and they stay proud of the wall by about an inch, roughly. Got a bit of conduit over there just to bring the last piece of the, the loop back from the other panel. And this panel will slot in here and then it'll be pressed against these two angle irons. They're not angle irons, they're angle aluminiums or aluminium angle sections. Be pressed against them by some little cleats. Little clips like this and they're just little bits of aluminium cut to shape with three, three stainless steel screws. I would have liked to have these right close together so that this one would be up here, except I had an extractor vent. So, and this is part of another project, this hole, um, that's for water from a rainwater system, which will be in a future video. But uh, this extractor vent was in my way, so I couldn't have them arranged up close. I could have on that side, but then it would have looked lopsided, so I went for it this way. Up on top then, I have a single 3x2, three, 3 meters long, as the bottom support, and it works just fine. It's exactly the same as here, except that some of the brackets are shared. The back bracket, the back clip is shared between two panels. Up on top, I have a piece of stainless, no, aluminium solar panel rail. I got a bit of surplus rail from a installation that had been removed but I didn't get that many clips and that was the issue. So I've only got a few clips, but I've got plenty of rail. So I used a bit of rail to hold it in. I think in a vertical scenario, it's better to have it resting on something. Don't know how true that is because I've seen other installations just clamped on like that. But uh, in this situation, this is how I've done it. And I think it's overkill. Uh, the timber, I don't know how long it'll last. I guess I'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's tantalized timber, so it's pressure treated softwood and I've used so little of it it actually was very cheap everything else the screws and the aluminium I had and my boxes of bits and the track up there I got for free so it's worked out well the only bit of this installation I've really paid for is the cable which is expensive the solar cable you can have a quick look in here that's the panel detail and there's the clip so the power goes from this panel up to here and then one after another after another down through this piece of black pipe into this one and then out through this white pipe under here under the windowsill I've just used white to match the windowsill uh, back and then it goes down into a conduit with its body it goes into the conduit and goes down to the inverter and that's pretty standard installation then after that, but it's just the timber brackets and clips that I'm showing you in this short video. 
And so it's clear that I've got scaffolding in and I've got the scaffolding in because I wanted to do pointing on some of the walls and while I was getting it in I might as well have put it here and I'm going to do the rainwater collection and all that so scaffolding makes it easier. But I put all these panels up, all five of them, the bottom ones were quite easy but I put the top three up by myself and so here's a short very quick time lapse of me doing it from a ladder on scaffolding by myself and it worked out really well, I was quite pleased with it. So after that, what can we say about solar panels? Well, I've had the ones over there in for a few months now, and I think they've made about 500 kilowatt hours of electricity, which is a small fraction. It's about a quarter, I'd say, of the electricity we use. But the issue is that you tend to use more electricity at night. So I've changed my style a bit in terms of the power I'm using, and I'm using more power now during the daytime, like washing machines or whatever. And if you can cook something on electricity during the day, and then save it for night time. You know, little things, they add up. But these ones should push my power generation later on into the evening, and that should help. But the only way to get over the night time is to use battery storage, and I'm not there yet, but as a hobby, these solar panels are great. I'm kind of really interested in them, and uh, I'm tinkering away with them, and you know, doing this kind of thing as a DIY installation is, I think it's good for you. So, with these in, I should be getting just, just about four kilowatts maximum. And that's the most that inverter can handle. So if I get any more panels, I've already got a few free ones. I'll bung them on another wall and make a little bit more electricity. And I might get some batteries in the future as well. And if I do, there'll be a video. But uh, what can I say about solar panels? Just give them a go. They're excellent. Kind of magic is what I would say. They don't move and they just make electricity. And when these are all on, you can do pretty much anything in the house except for have an electric shower. Boil a kettle, um, probably run a tumble dryer, anything on a 13 amp plug, these should be able to do if, if they're getting the full blast of sun. We'll see. At the moment, when it's, when it's sunny, that array there, or that series of panels there, string even, can make two kilowatts. So it's not too complicated to think we should be getting three. And that brings you up to a 13 amp plug. So anything on a 13 amp plug should be possible. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.